Hi friends, Sharon Thomas here from Established Footsteps Ministry. And today I wanna to share something with you. If you are a Christian, if you are a believer in Jesus, if you've made a vow of devotion to him in your life and you're seeking to live for him, I, I really believe God has a word he wants me to share with you. If you're not a Christian, you are more than welcome to listen. But I just wanted you to know from the very beginning that this is something that I really wanna share and really believe God would have me to share with, with those who are seeking uh, to follow Christ. This is the first time that I'm gonna be sharing publicly in any way about the turmoil that's going on in our country uh, regarding um, racism and just the both sides of the camp. In fact, I should say more than both sides because there's multiple sides that people are landing on. Um, the Lord, uh, during this season has really called me to be silent in a public way. You might have wondered if you follow me at all, you might have wondered, you know, why is she not saying anything? You know, or you might have noticed I, I've not posted anything about that and that has been very intentional. I've certainly had things I've wanted to share at times, things I've wanted to say, but I have known very clearly that God has called me to be silent until now. But it's been in this season of silence um, that I really um, had to find something to do with everything that was going on in my heart because believe me, the emotions have been all over the place. I've wrestled, I've cried, I've grieved, I felt sick, I felt anger. Um, you know, I've tried to just set it to the side and not think about it, um, all the emotions. And while that's been, been hard, what I have found to do with all of that is to come running to Jesus and to come to the center of the cross. And what I've realized is, is that the Lord called me to be silent because I would have been so quick to just start speaking out of my flesh. And one of the very first things that he spoke to me was that the flesh never profits life. In other words, doing things out of my own thinking and saying things and acting out of my own thinking and my own you know, um, preferences and, and just, you know, experiences and life patterns and all of that. It's just flesh. And I've had to learn how to renew my mind in, in the Word of God. And that's been a lifelong process and I've by no means arrived. But during the season of Him calling me to be silent in a public way, it's, I've had to do something with all of that. And so what I've had to do is to come to Him and to talk to him about it. And I've found that what that has done is drawn me away from the side that I would most naturally lean into and find my way back to the center of Christ and into the center of his cross. I've certainly had some private conversations about this. Uh, I, I've definitely done that, but in a public way, I've not spoken. But even in just even having personal conversations and all of that, I find myself just leaning over into a side and the Holy Spirit will have to, you know, let me know you're leaning over there. I want you here. I want you in the center. And so the reason that I believe the Lord would have me speak today is I've also realized that all of us in our humanity, we have a tendency to lean toward a side. When the winds start blowing, we're gonna lean this way or we're gonna lean that way. We're gonna find ourselves, you know, trying to find safety, trying to find refuge, trying to find a place where we can, you know, um, be identified. But as a believer in Jesus, even though I would naturally, you know, whatever the turmoil is, probably lean to one side or the other, my role, my responsibility, the stewardship of my salvation is that I come back to the center of Jesus and I center myself in Him and in His cross and in His mission because that's what I've given my life to. And if you're a believer in Jesus, that's what you've given your life to as well. So the reason I'm speaking today is not for a side, but because I believe the Lord really wanted me to share some things that I've just been learning in the center. And to encourage you as a Christian, as a believer in Jesus, a disciple, a follower of Christ, to center yourself in him as well. So I'm just going to share, I've got seven different checkpoints really that the Lord has just been working in my heart. It's not like he said, okay, here's your seven checkpoints, but I've, I've realized as I've been journaling and writing things down in the center, 
these are the seven things that really uh, he, he's just been reiterating over and over again. They've been the learning points for me. They've been the things that have drawn me away from the side and back to the center. First of all, if you know me at all, you're not going to be surprised at this one, um, but it's to be in the Word, right? In the Word of God, to meditate on that Word, to be reading that Word, to be thinking on that Word, talking about that Word, praying about that Word, memorizing that Word, sharing that Word. You know, one of the things that I have noticed in this season is that there are a plurality of books, there's a plurality of voices speaking, of posts, of blogs, of news stuff, all this stuff, forums and this and that and man speaking. I want to encourage you, what I've had to do myself is to seek the Word of God first. One of the things I've had to ask myself is the foundation of how I'm thinking about this specific, you know, thing that's happened today or, you know, whatever, is the foundation of how I'm thinking about that based in the word or is the foundation of how I'm thinking about that based on my experience, on what so-and-so said, on how I was raised, on, you know, what my perspective has been in the past, or is it really based in the word of God? For instance, I'll just share with you one of the things that I've had to, you know, just really be continually making a shift about is from a biblical standpoint, there's really one race, the race of being a descendant of Adam and Eve, right? The, the Bible's very clear. We are all descendants of Adam and Eve. There was only one person who ever walked the face of the planet who was not a descendant of Adam and Eve, and that was Jesus Christ. He was the son of God right? And he is the only one who's been able to make any difference in the, that situation. And he, he made one dividing situation. He, he called us out of the being a descendant of Adam and gave us the opportunity to become a child of God. And really that is our distinction points. And yet, you know what? In my humanity, in my 55 year old self, in my growing up as a white woman in this culture, that's not the way I've thought of things. It's just not. But if I wanna think biblically, if I wanna put the word of God first in my life, I gotta shift that and that takes time and that takes time with the Holy Spirit and just you know, renewing my mind in what God's word says. And there are countless things foundationally that are just in error in most of our thinking about things. We tend to think from a cultural perspective and based on our experience, based on what other people are saying. And if we're gonna think biblically, we've got to be in the Word. And I, I've had to ask myself, I, you, know, you know I've not been posting about any of this, but I've had to ask myself, even in conversations that I'm having, you know, am I talking about more what I think? Am I talking about what so-and-so said? Am I, am I talking about you know, what I read over here or heard over here? Or am I talking about what the Word of God says? Is that have a, uh, you know, a first place with me? For you, if you've been actively posting a bunch of things, I, I would encourage you as a checkpoint to, to ask yourself, when's the last time that I, I posted something about how God thinks about something? And was I even willing to share if it was different than maybe what I would have thought on, on my own? Maybe we're only using the Word of God to be a fuel for what we think instead of really just going to the Word of God with an open mind and hearing what God's Word says. Are we reading the Word of God? Are we asking God to enlighten His Word for us and show us what it says and what it means and, and how it speaks into this culture and this time and this season? I mean, the Bible's very clear in Hebrews 4. It says the Word of God is alive and active and sharper than a double-edged sword, and, and it penetrates to divide soul and spirit. In other words, it gets in the middle of all the confusion in our world and in our mind, and it'll lay them out side by side so that we can see clearly and then make a choice. What do we want to follow? Do we want to stay over here on the side, or do we want to get in the center with what God thinks about all of this? And more often than not, He's got thoughts that haven't even entered our hearts yet, that we've not even thought about yet, that we need to hear and that we need to build our life upon. And so to center ourselves, we've got to be in the Word of God first, not just, you know, um, 
in, in a sense of, oh, I believe in the Bible and I'm making my stand on the Bible, but I'm talking about literally physically being in that word every day, every day, multiple times a day. In a season like that, we need the word of God. Number two, I would say this, if we're gonna be centered, we're gonna have to pray without ceasing. And I think one of the first prayers that needs to be coming out of our mouths is God search my heart and help me to know your heart. It's easy to assume when we run off to a side that we know God's heart. If everybody else around us is saying, this is what God's heart is, we can just assume that and not even talk to him about what his heart is. And we can just assume that our heart's good because everybody else around us is saying that our heart is good. In reality, Ugly things have crept into our hearts. So we need to be praying for God to search out our heart and for us to search out His, to know what His heart is. We need to be praying for wisdom. We need to be praying for a humble spirit. You know, humility is the way forward. It's the way forward. And yet it's so counterintuitive to our flesh. Again, the flesh is never gonna profit life. And that's what the Lord has, has been showing me is that you, Sharon, have got to be centered in me by being in prayer with me, by talking to me continually. Because the voices around you that you're hearing are not always what I'm really saying and what I'm really thinking. Praying to be an ambassador of Christ in this season, this is a time where we can be shining light and, and, and church and, and brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm so sad to say that's not what I'm seeing. It's not what I'm seeing. It, and it's grieved me to the core. We can be an ambassador of Christ, but it's gonna take the power of the Holy Spirit to do that when our, when our emotions are running so high in, these, in this season, to pray for our enemies, right? Even, even if you think, well, I don't really have an enemy, I just disagree with this person, but we can begin to develop a mindset and even emotions that, that really, if God was to get inside our heart, he would probably say, you're thinking of that person as your enemy. Praying for God to bless them. There's power in doing that. There's humility in that. It's so important. If we're going to be centered in Christ, that we center ourselves in prayer and we're praying without ceasing. Number three would be guarding against pride. And you can see how these, you know, being in the word and being in prayer really just builds into this, guarding against pride. We're all prone to it, right? The Bible's very clear that, that pride is the root of all sin. It's the root of all evil. And you know, so many of us are talking in this time about learning, about listening. But I would encourage you, as I've had to encourage myself and I've had to do this myself, to check myself and say, am I only interested in learning what fuels what I already think? Or am I humbly seeking out the opposite thought pattern, the opposite side of where I would naturally lean and listening? and leaning in there as well. And I would say that goes for both sides of, of the argument or all sides. Maybe there's probably more than two. It seems like there's two, but there's probably more than that. We, we all need to be doing that. We all need to be listening. You know, we all need to be willing to learn something that would cause us to see the other side differently because we don't know everything and we can easily get into a place of thinking that we do and pride can just creep into our heart. You know, I've learned in my own life and in this season as well, that sometimes when I have swung too far over here, that God's gotta take me way back over here to then get me in the center. And so I think even just, um, you know, making sure that we're in the center as far as guarding our hearts against pride. Sometimes we need to do something that swings way over here. Like we need to, instead of just posting things that are about our side or talking about things that are about where we would naturally lean and where we're you know, thinking that it's the right thing, that maybe once we've learned something else, that we're willing to post that and to humbly say, you know what, I'm learning. And I've learned this about this situation, about this turmoil. One of the things that the Lord has had to do in my heart multiple times in this is I have, I have kind of run back over to my side in exaggerating things. Like I'm having a conversation about where I would naturally lean and some things that I've heard, I, I, I've realized Holy Spirit's like, you're, you're, 
making that out to be bigger than it is. You're exaggerating that. You're like putting a magnifying glass on that when there's so many other things to consider. And he's had to say, don't do that. Pull me back in. So I would say check your heart for exaggeration. Check your heart for magnification of things that really just fuel what you're wanting to say, but maybe aren't the whole picture, aren't the big picture. Maybe you need to swing all the way over here and bless somebody that you specifically know thinks differently than you do. Like pour out love upon them, pour out a blessing upon them. That would so speak to the heart of God. What are we intentionally doing to guard our hearts against pride? We're so prone to run to a side. We've got to center ourselves in the humility that's found in Christ. That humility that he exhibited for us on the cross. Number four would be this, to be careful with our anger. You know, we all get angry. And especially when we have heightened emotions about things and things have been building in our hearts for a long, 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 long time we felt a certain way about things for a long, long time, we can, we can get anger. But one of the things that God's word says is that the anger of man does not bring about the righteousness of God. I literally have sat in that for days, like just meditating on that. The anger of man does not bring about, or some versions say, accomplish the righteousness of God. So I would, I would just encourage you, if, you wanna, if, if you're a believer in Jesus and you really are more interested in centering yourself in the cross and in Christ than on a side than, and, and doing his work in all of this, that you check and be careful with your anger. You know, um, one of the things that God has reminded me of in this is that, you know, when my, when my husband and I got married, um, some of you know my husband, Marvin, um, we've been married 33 years, just celebrated our 33rd anniversary, so we've been married a long time. But we both have really strong personalities, and we can both easily take a side. And that happened a lot early on in our marriage. And so, really, our, our, our home in the early years could easily have been seen as a war zone at times because we would just come out fighting. And we had to learn there are certain words that we just don't use. There are fighting words that, are, that just incite anger and, and, and rile people up. And you know what? The Lord reminded me of that and of that wisdom for this season as well. I, I, I would encourage you in this. Calling somebody a racist or implying that they are a racist, those are fighting words. And they don't do anything about bringing about the righteousness of God. Now, calling out sin for what it is, there is a time and a place in that. And, and, and you might say, well, yeah, but Jesus spoke in anger and he called things the way that they were. But you know what? I'm not Jesus and neither are you. Jesus could see into the hearts of people. Jesus often in his day and time, he called people a Pharisee. And you know what? It's easy in this season even to do that. To, to attach that word. You know, you know, you don't like what somebody's saying, you don't like their point of view. So in the Christian realm of things, uh, another fighting word is to call somebody a Pharisee or to say they have a Pharisaical spirit about that kind of ideology or thought pattern. Those are fighting words. I don't think that they center us together in unity in the cross. Have the conversations, have the hard conversations. But be careful with your anger. And you got to check those things on your own. I'm not going to say you never should use those words. You know, just like in your own marriage, your own relationships, you've got to learn how to fight fair, right? You've got to learn how to have hard conversations and do it in a way that's beneficial. The main reason I believe the Lord called me to be quiet was to center me. But also, what I've heard from him over and over again, speaking now would not be beneficial. It wouldn't be beneficial because everybody's just angry and riled up and no one's really listening to one another anyway. And I know that's a generalized statement, but in a lot of ways, it's very true. And so, you know, I, I've tried to wait for when my words might would be beneficial and to save them for conversations where I think that they are. But we've got to in that, you know, it's not that I haven't felt some anger because I definitely have, but we've got to be careful with our anger. When we use words like all and every and never and always describing a certain group of people, those are fighting words. Those are fighting words. They don't bring about unity. Be careful with our anger. When Jesus spoke those things, his motive was always pure. 
I can't be sure that mine always is. So if I'm gonna use those words, I gotta be really, really careful with my anger. Number five, I think this is so important. It's something that God has been just speaking to me over and over again as he draws me into his heart, is to see people as individuals. That's what Jesus did. He saw people as individuals. You know, even in the Old Testament where people were more often dealt with as groups by God, there's so many stories in the Old Testament where um, he dealt with the individual. I mean, you think about you know, when they went in to take over Jericho, I mean, Rahab, she was seen as an individual. Ruth was seen as an individual. There were so many times that even like when the children of Israel left the, um, you know, left the, the land of Egypt, you know, there were ones who had put their faith in the one true God. God saw them as individuals. And we've got to see people as individuals. Once the new covenant came under Christ, he, he abolished all of that. It says, you know, in God's word that there's no longer Barbithian, slave, free, all these different things, all these different nations. Yes, they're there, but that's not how he sees people. He sees people as individuals in Christ, children of God, for those who choose to call upon the name of Jesus and enter into that place of being a child of God. These are some things that the Lord has shown me when I don't see people as individuals, when I group people, I often presume things about people and I make statements of presumption that group everyone into that presumption and that causes a lot of hurt and it causes a lot of strife. Proverbs tells us that presumption brings about strife. When we presume things and there's been so many so many statements leveled from one side to the other that are full of so much presumption because we're grouping people. Don't group people. Christ sees us as individuals. We need to, from a biblical standpoint, see people as individuals. When we group people, that's the first step to dehumanizing people. And that can lead to all manner of evil in our hearts. And we don't even know that it's there. Our hearts are deceitfully wicked. They, we can deceive ourselves and to think we're doing God's work when in reality we're not. And so we have to be very careful to see people as, as creations one by one with a story to tell, with experiences to share. We cannot just group people as one. When I group people, I become permission giving to myself and treating people who are in that group outside the realm of how Christ would treat them so important that we don't do that. And when I group people, I cause division instead of working toward unity. I wanna draw people in one by one into the grace and love of Jesus Christ. As a believer, centered in Christ, that's my mission. That's my most important mission. And so I would say that would be number six, to put first things first, right? The mission of Jesus is to draw all people into relationship with God. And that should be the thing that I am most passionate about. And really, that will define so many other things in my life. Am I fighting more for souls to know Christ, to be brought into the center of Christ? Or am I fighting more for my side? Which am I more passionate about? I gotta check my heart on that. The Lord has had to check my heart on that as I have veered off to a side. He's had to bring me back to the center and say, remember Sharon, this is our mission. Our mission is to draw people into being a child of God. And that is available for anyone and everyone. And lastly, I would say this, be very careful. I've had to learn to be centered in Christ. I have to be very careful about speaking on God's behalf. It's so easy to run off to our side and attach God's name and his heart to our agenda. We get all riled up and we presume that God, God is riled up with us. And while he might be in this way or that way, we just attach him into all of it. We put all of it in one pot and then it doesn't really represent him. So check our thoughts in scripture. We have to do that. Pray for wisdom. Remember love and truth. You know, so often I think what happens when we start speaking for God is we, we pull one of those things out and love and truth and scripture go together. You know, if we're only interested in loving people we, and we, we're not 
um, on the truth, th that just gets really, really mushy. And if we're only interested in truth without love, then that gets really hard and bitter and angry. So it's love and truth. And, and, and that will always be a filter for what God is doing. You know, something God taught me earlier this year, before any of this really, you know, came to such, I know it's been, you know, an issue for, for years and years and years, but before, you know, just came boiling over, is that I need to take a holy pause before I speak. So if I'm gonna speak on God's behalf, mm, I gotta pause, a holy pause, and make sure that if I'm gonna attach God's name and his heart to something, that it's not just me doing that over here on my side, but that I really am centered in Christ. You know, the fight in the center is one that is reaching out to every side and lovingly and truthfully sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Saying you can be included here. You belong here. You will be loved here. It's a reaching out. It's a humbling. I'm just sharing with you lessons that I've learned in the center. And I'm still learning. And I'm encouraging you as a believer in Jesus, as a follower, a devoted follower of Jesus, as a disciple of Jesus, that you take a pause, that you take a breath today, and you center yourself in Him. And you can know that I'm doing it as well. And I'll have to wake up tomorrow and do it afresh, then as well, and the next time as well. I know that there might be some things that I've even shared in here that um, maybe um, make you wanna take a side. I pray that you'll hear the heart of what I'm sharing. Um, we can certainly talk about the, the thoughts and the, the, the ideas that we have or things that we believe God is leading us to do, and, and we can do that. Feel free to reach out to me privately in any way, and, and I'll talk with you about that. But please don't turn this post into a, um, into a, a time for you to press your side. Can we press for the center? Can we press for the center of being in Jesus here? And, and, and make sure, just take a breath. And maybe you are just completely centered. Maybe you are completely centered. Praise God if you are. And I pray that that's where you are tomorrow, and I pray that maybe these things will encourage you to stay there. And I know there's probably more that we could be doing. I could only make a video, but so long, right? <laughs> there's always more to learn. I want you to know I love you. I love the body of Christ, and I believe this is a time that we can thrive and shine and call forth the world out of darkness and into the marvelous light of Jesus. But we can't do that if we're over on the side. We can only do that in the center, working together for the cause of Jesus, which is to make disciples, to bring people in to knowing Jesus and becoming a child of God. I'm praying blessings upon the body of Christ today that we would be centered. Have a great day.